Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. Today I wanted to share with you a couple of tips on hatching. Here on the images you can see a couple of examples of hatching. It is a very traditional way of covering objects. You can use it to cover a bottle, make a fender, make a key fob and so on. There are a ton of applications. Now, over time, any technique can be developed further, such is the case with hatching as well. So in this video, we're going to try to make hatching a bit more efficient. My first tip covers where to start your hatching. Imagine that we're trying to cover up this distance in between the two cords using a wrap made out of hatches. We could start at the top or at the bottom, or more ideally at the center. By starting at the middle and working out towards the outer points, we can use two shorter working hands which are easier to manage. So the process is faster and requires less effort. So let me show you. First off, find the middle point in your cord. Place it in the middle and wrap around once. Like this. This cord is our working end. Now simply line up a bunch of hatches coming from the middle all the way to the bottom. So our first hatch like this. Then simply continue lining up hatches. And we would do this all the way to the bottom. Then we can switch to the other working hand by rotating our project around like this and again working from the middle towards the bottom. Again, lining up hatches. So this way you can work from the middle towards the outer points and save a lot of time and effort. So this is my first tip on making hatching more manageable. 
The second tip that I would like to offer concerns court management. Instead of using a single, long piece of cordage, consider using several shorter pieces. This again makes hatching quicker and easier to do. So let me show you how to do this. Here I have covered a small section using one of my cords. I ran out of cord and I want to continue going. So I'm going to grab a second cord, bury it a bit deeper into my wrap, and come out right alongside the first working hand. So the standing hand is going to stay here under my wrap, like this, and I'm simply going to continue going. So I continue here at the next loop, creating a hatch. Covering over my previous working hand. So it's not even visible. Like this. And the next hitch. and the next one, and so on. So let me do this for a while and I'm going to show you how it looks. So after the working hand is buried under the hitches. After working with the second cord a bit, it's not all that easy to see where we transition from the first cord onto the second one. This technique is also useful for making multicolor projects. So you start with one color, transition into a second one, third one, and so on. A more secure alternative to tucking your cord under your hitches is to splice the new cord onto your existing one. So how do you do this? First off, you're going to need a fairly sharp lacing needle. You attach this one onto your existing hand. You take one end of your new cord, trim it a little bit, Remove about an inch of your inner strands. And melt the outer sheet. Then Splice your existing hand through your new cord. 
You do this by traveling through your outer sheet like this and out. Like this. Now we are going to reverse the chords. So our new chord is going to get the lacing needle We are going to trim the existing end Pull out about an inch of inner strands Trim them and melt the outer sheet. Then take the end of your new cord with the lacing needle and run it through like this through your existing end. Like this. Then pull on your new cord like this and the splice is made. So this is a variation of the many method. The last step is one that many of you are already familiar with. It is how to handle different diameters. So when you're covering an object that gets wider or narrower, how do you handle that transition? So here I have a few rows of hitches. I'm now going to increase the diameter of my hitching here where my object gets wider. To do this, what I'm going to do is create a hitch, just like I usually do. like this and now I'm going to add a second hitch onto the same cord just to get more hitches going. So again a hitch right next to the previous one. This way I get more hitches spreading out my hitching more evenly. Now you don't have to do this every time, maybe every second chord, every third one and so on. So here I'm going to only place one hitch onto the next chord. Then again, two onto the third one.
like this, then keep going. So, by adding more hatches, we can handle the transitioning onto larger diameters. Sometimes, instead of increasing the diameter of our hatching, we need to do the opposite. So, we're going to transition from a wider section to one with a smaller diameter. So here, instead of adding extra hitches, we need to remove a few so that we get a consistent hitching. So to do this, all we do is basically skip a chord, then add a hitch. Then we can add another hatch to the next chord. Like this. Maybe skip the next chord. Add another hatch. and so on. Basically, we are tapering off our hatching by dropping hatches. So that was my third tip. Increasing the number of hatches when you increase the diameter of what you are wrapping and dropping hatches when the diameter gets smaller. So guys, I hope that these hatching tips are going to improve the quality of your hatching, making it easier and faster. So with that, happy 2019. See ya next time.